You cannot enchant without the enchanters. Bring my enchanters forth. Far to the north is a green and pleasant land. It is the land of the goddess Eru, the land of iron. Do you remember when you were children, Peter Pan? If nobody believes in fairies, they die. Do you believe in fairies? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not loud enough. Tinkerbell will die if you do not believe in fairies. Do you believe in fairies? The fairies are real. They are not just a thing of children's stories. From the Hebridean Islands to Nova Scotia, the fairies live. And I have had many, many encounters with them, as has Gavin, my husband. Children in Ireland are losing their ability to see them and hear them. I've heard the fairy piper. It's almost the sound of an oboe, born on the wind. I have met the banshee many times. I have seen one of the children of Dana, the great Danaeans, the Toy de Danan. I watched her cure a dog from blindness from birth and give it back its sight. Do you really believe in fairies? From Nova Scotia, to the Hebridean Islands, there is a story. I myself have fairy blood in me, which is why I am so tiny. I am not joking. I have Pictish blood in me from the Isles of Scotland. The tiny people. Genetically, we are all marked the same way. I have pointed ears. This is where the idea of fairies pointed ears come from. They come from the bits. I have Romanian blood in me. Back to Elizabeth Bathory, the bloody countess. I have Welsh blood in me and Saxon blood in me. And when my mother carried me in her womb, a druid appeared in front of her and pointed at her pregnant belly and claimed me as their own. For it was my ancestors that fought against Rome on Holy Island. And the women ran wild, screaming with their flaming torches to fight the mighty power of Rome. They did not defeat us, we live today. We live in memory. But from Ireland I bring you this. From Nova Scotia to the Hebridean Islands to the wild west Atlantic coast. There are people who are not of this world. They are called the Silky, the seal men and seal women of the ocean, who if they choose, come to the shore and make a mortal. This is the story of Peter Kagan and the wind. Peter Kagan was a fisherman off the coast of Ireland. Peter Kagan was a lonely, lonely man. He had no love in his life. But one day, she came to him, the fairest of women. She rose from the ocean and shed her seal skin. She took off her seal skin cap and gave it to Peter. I said, Peter, I would wed you and be 
be your mortal wife. All the villagers knew she was not mortal, but she was a kindly woman, and they loved her. Peter was a fisherman by trade. He had a little boat called a dory, a little boat with a sail and oars. And he would go out in the cold Atlantic deep and fish for the Cola Herring. The Cola Herring, as the women of Scotland say, are the lives of men. For many have drowned at sea, out in the cold grey Atlantic, bringing in the herring fleet. Peter supported his family fishing for the Cola Herring. And life was good with his seal wife, his beautiful silk. She stayed with him, but said, one day, Peter, my people will call me home, and I must go. I must take my seal skin cap and once more shiver into the waves and lose my human mortality. He said, yes, my darling, I know but I know you love me. One year, the herring was not running free. It had been a bad year for Peter. Autumn was coming. Not a good time to hunt the herring. But he knew without the herring, his family would starve. And so one last time, he turned to his lovely wife and he said, my darling, I am going to see and she looked him in the eyes and she said, Peter, please don't go. And he said, hush, woman. He went down to his dory. She stood there with tears pouring down her face and turned her back on him and walked back to her cottage and lit a single candle in the window. And as his little dory sailed out of the Atlantic, she sang to him. Hagen ignored his wife's song and headed out into the ocean, past the gong buoy that warned of the crashing rocks. Over the jagged, crashing rocks he went, and the sky was blue, and the ocean was calm. It was late September. Further and further out he went, beyond the three-mile limit, to where the herring swam, and the day was gone. The silver fish were flying in the waves and the sun beat down upon him. And Kagan laughed at his wife. Oh, my dear, you should have trusted me. It is a good day for a fisherman. But Peter was wrong. For although the fishing was good that day and the herring were running free, Peter ignored the signs. But his wife was at the ocean and she knew better. For there on the horizon, the first storm clouds of winter began to gather, and behind them was the wind, the northern wind, that tosses and boils the ocean, and it was watching Peter. Peter pulled in his nets, his rich harvest, this would keep them warm for the winter. There was a good price for these fish. He did not know the price he was about to pay. Well, suddenly he saw the storm clouds and he thought, that's okay for October, but not this time of year, it's too early. And the storm clouds came closer. The ocean turned grey beneath his little dory. And the wind began to blow. And as it blew, the dory drifted further from the clashing rocks, further from the gong buoy, out into the ocean depths it went, spinning and turning as the wind began to howl. What are you doing, Kagan? <laughs> said the North Wind. 
I'm fishing. What business is it of yours, it pagan? It is my business. I'm bringing in the fish. I know your ways, North Wind. You do not frighten me. I do not frighten you, Peter. Poor mortal. You have nothing compared to me. I will fight you, said the North Wind. Fight me then, said Peter, and I will use you. I will use you for my own ends. Prove how powerful you are. Oh, said the North Ever so politely. Watch this, Cain. The clouds got darker and blacker, and the first flurries of snow of winter began to settle on his little dairy. Peter was becoming afraid. This was not right. So said the wind, You have challenged me. How now? You get your rich harvest to harbour. Easy, said Peter. I will use you. Oh, will you? said the proud North Wind, as Peter turned the dory around and he ran up the sail. Ha! said the North Wind. You think you are so clever, don't you? I will blow. And the wind blew, and the sail billowed, and Peter laughed. I told you I could use you. Oh yes, said the wind, but watch this. And the wind began to scream and howl around the dory, and the snow began to flurry quicker and faster, and the sail ripped from top to bottom. Felt in her heart the beat of the Atlantic Ocean. Something was wrong, something was terribly, terribly wrong, and she knew it. She stood looking out over the ocean and she saw the storm clouds gathering and she heard the howl of the north wind and she cried to Peter and she sang to him. For if the dory hit the ledges and the wind and the waves, Peter would drown. His little dory would be ripped apart as if it was made of plywood. Peter pulled down the sail and he said to the north wind, I will use my oars to row back to harbour. Oh, said the north wind, fine. Row, little man. Pitiful Peter Kagan, row. And so Peter began to row. But no matter how hard he rowed, the north wind was stronger and fiercer. And now the storm clouds were gathering over his head, and the snow was falling fast. And Peter realized he couldn't hear the gong buoy that warned him of the danger of the rocks. He couldn't see the harbor. All around him was swirling whiteness and the gray pounding Atlantic waves. And the ice was eating into his bones, and the north wind howled in delight. Now I have you, Kagan. You are mine, and I will have you perish under my ice-cold fingers. What are you going to do about that, Peter Kagan, fisherman? Ha! You're a fool. You should have listened to your wife. She knows my ways, and she knows the ways of the ocean, but you, stupid little man, now what will you do? Oh, by the way, Peter, watch this. With one fierce blast, he ripped the oars from Kagan's hands, which were bloody and raw from trying desperately to row against the force of the ocean. Peter realised all was in vain. He knew he was going to die. The ice began to eat into his bones. He ripped the sailcloth around him and wrapped himself in it and said, Sail, keep me warm. And the sail said, I can't keep you 
more peace. There is nothing I can do. I am so sorry. You served me well, said Peter. I know I am dying. I will never see my home again in my land. Then I have won once at the north and the wind. And let out the scream that only the north wind can give in its glory. But that scream carried far across the ocean, past the clashing rocks, past the gong buoy, onto the shore, up the harbour, to Peter's cottage, where his wife stood. She knew what she had to do. And she sang one song. As Peter lay dying in the bottom of the boat, he dreamed. He dreamed of her. Of her emerald green eyes, her skin that was as soft as that of a seal, her grey brown, grey wintered hair that was coming with age, her lovely smile of his beautiful wife. And then, laughing and dancing over the waves she came, her hair flying in the north wind she came, howling against the wind she said, I am here, you will never take my Kagan from me. Screaming to the wind she came in her glory, beautiful to behold. And the sky around her pulled back, for such was her loveliness, and the ocean rejoiced with her. Laughing, she came and wrapped him in her beautiful arms and held his face to her beating breast and rocked him gently into a sleep which he thought was death. And the storm went away and the wind went away and the snow went away. And as the darkness cleared, the dawn began to rise, beautiful to behold. And the little dory gently drifted on the waves back to the harbour. And all the fishermen saw the dory coming, drifting gently, so gently home. Was Peter alive? But the ocean claimed him. They and their wives crossed themselves, for they were good Christians. And they ran down to the harbour to see the dory. And there they saw a miracle. Lying asleep, wrapped in a tattered sailcloth, was Peter. The look on his face was absolute peace, like a child resting. The rosy flush on his cheek said that he was alive. But over the sailcloth, was the body of a dead grey Atlantic seal, and the seal was covered with snow. She gave her life for love, and the world echoed with her final song. That is the story of Peter Kagan and the wind. A little touch of Irish magic. I met a man who married a seal woman. She died and he spent the rest of his life watching the ocean. Stuart and I knew him personally. He would only drink one glass of Guinness a day. He was an old man in his 90s. And he said, I drink any more, one night a great storm will come off the Atlantic and it will be her people calling me. If I've had too much to drink, I won't hear them. 
for when the call comes, I will join them. Several years later, Gavin met the police officer who knew about this and who witnessed the whole event. He retired and came to visit us and we asked about the old man. He said a year after you left Ballycroy in County Mayo, one night I passed this cottage and I knew the storm was coming. The next morning the candle was burning in his window. Way had been waiting for his wife all those years. I found him dead on the beach in exactly the same spot my father had found his wife. And like her, he had the most peaceful smile on his face. He said, The strange thing is, when his wife died, he took a little box from above the mantelpiece over the fireplace. It was her seal skin cap. He threw it into the ocean, took his lovely court bride in his hand, and kissed her. And a single Atlantic seal rose, caught the little cap and took it down onto the water. Tom, that police officer, said, I knew what had happened. He said, I walked to the edge of the waves and I said, you're with her now, aren't you? You're at peace. He said, we don't get seals in that part of Black Sod Bay. In fact, when his wife was there, that's the only time we ever saw the seal. He said, on that occasion, two grey Atlantic seals rose up to greet me twisted round each other and dived under the waves together and I never saw them again. He entered the world of the silky with his silky bride. So I hope you like that story because it is true. <laughs>